Okay, so I've set up the record for the meeting and I want to, um, okay, let's, that's, that's great. Thank you for letting me know. I want to welcome you both and Nicola as well to the um, next webinar in the series, which is the one held by the UK, which is, hello, welcome. Um, I just started, um, so we've not missed anything. So I'm just welcoming everybody to the next webinar in the series, which is the UK one about which ICT works best for home and hospital school education. And this is just to show the outcomes of fieldwork trials that were held across Europe. So um, if you have any issues, obviously type up. Um, first of all, some brief information about how this webinar is going to work. Um, there's going to be roughly a 45-minute presentation followed by a 15-minute question and answer session. The, um, you will be able to hear me, but you will not be able to use the speak function because I've muted the microphones so that we don't get interruptions as the webinar happens. But you can post any questions in the um, chat facility and that's being monitored and any questions you might have will be responded to on an ongoing basis by my colleague Nicola. The question and answer session will also be via the text chat facility. And um, this, recession, this session is being recorded and you will be able to download it or view it from the LEHO website at any time afterwards or share that link with people that were not able to make it. Also wanted to show you quickly the Adobe Connect screen because you might not be familiar with it. Yours will look something similar to this. I have expanded the text chat facility, which is the block at the bottom, and we don't have a video facility, but you can see all the attendees and who is here. And um, the little green buttons at the top is for your speakers and your microphone. So it would be good if the um, speakers and, uh, were muted, your microphone was muted, but your speakers are, are on, so you can hear me. So what this webinar is going to cover is just a brief introduction to what the LAHO project is and also the Children's Hospital School in Leicester. I'll then cover how the uh, list of ICTs, which are Inform Information and Communication Technologies, was drawn up how we then arrived at a big collection of what we called the Innovative Practices Collection. Then what we did with that collection and how we turned them from cards into actual actions. I'll then explain what the LAHO Partner Schools did with this information. How we uh, received our feedback from teachers trialing these in schools and give you some of the results and analysis that I carried out on the data that came back from SurveyMonkey. So learning at home and in the hospital, that's what the LAHO project is. It's a European project, three year, um, coming towards the end of its three years now. And it is tasked with developing an online hub to provide tools and resources for people who are engaged with or involved in home and hospital based education. And this is for teaching and reaching children who are not able to attend their mainstream schools because they are too ill to go. Um, the main aim was to explore these ICT-based solutions and to see what could be used to help um, aid the education provision that they already had. So not to replace it, not to be instead of it, but to add to the existing provision that they would already have. So that is briefly Laho. The Children's Hospital School in Leicester is the only UK partner that's taking part in the Laho project. Um, the school obviously is based in Leicester in the UK. It has four different types of units, although um, three different locations. 
the first one is at Willow Bank School and that is an actual small school that provides education for students who were, we would say in the UK are secondary school level who are on able to attend um, their own education for medical reasons. So they have to have a medical reason to be referred to the school. Their parents can't refer them, they can't self-refer, their teachers can't refer them. It has to be a medical referral. Then we also have the Leicester Royal Infirmary, which is a general hospital. And we provide education for children and young people who are inpatients at the hospital, assuming that they are well enough to attend. Now, it, we did have some classrooms in the hospital, and we are hoping to do so once again. But at the moment, the children are taught at the bedside on a one-to-one -one basis. The next unit is at Ward 3 at Colville Hospital. And this is a child and adult mental health, um, child and adolescent mental health unit, um, psychiatric hospital that provides access to education for inpatients as long as they are again well enough to attend. And it provides activities that support their students to maintain their level of education while they are not well enough to go to school. And then based at Willowbank as well, we have an outreach provision and this provides home tuition for students both at primary and secondary level who are actually not able to leave home for medical reasons. So they might have their leg in plaster or they might have severe um, anxiety and not able to actually leave the house. They could have agoraphobia or something like that. So once they have been medically referred to us, the outreach team provides some cover education for these children as well. So that's what the Children's Hospital School does and we are then part of the group of European hospital schools and organisations involved in the LAHO project. So as part of this project we're tasked at um, looking at um, how and what ICTs already exist. The project was not about developing new types of um, communication technology. It was actually looking at what was out there and what they might already have experience of. So all partners were invited to contribute to a collection and add their own experiences. And this was a massive, great big spreadsheet. And this was called the Innovative Practices Collection. And the Children's Hospital School looked at this massive collection of um, resources that partners knew about and analysed it based on key educational factors. These key educational factors were the outcomes of focus group discussions that had been held earlier on in the project with medics and teachers involved in hospital school education. And the six factors that came out were relationships, forming and building relationships, making sense and constructing knowledge from the information that the children had around them, um, assuming roles in front of others, so being able to be the leader, being able to take on a personality and a role in front of others, which quite often children in isolation, if they're ill, are not able to do. Metacognition, which is actually more about realising that you're learning something, so being aware of the process of education. Individualities, which was about pupils being able to assume and be themselves, really. Even though they were ill, it was more about them being the person rather than the illness. And then a final one, which was about inter-institutional communication, which is very important because, as you can imagine, the child isn't at school, but their school teachers are moving on and setting work for the rest of the class. And there needs to be communication between that child's teachers and whoever is looking after their education while they're ill. So this massive great big list that was drawn up was analysed based on these six factors. And what happened next was I'll just show you a snippet from the list. It looked like a great big spreadsheet. Um, here are a couple of examples that were suggested by several partners. One was looking at um, using Edmodo, which is a type of Facebook type application, um, which but it, but is safe because it's controlled by passwords 
used by the institution alone and that would be a very useful tool to communicate with students and certainly we use it at the children's hospital school for students and they can put on keep all their work in there and communicate with their class teachers and the other one which was a thing called a pupil passport which is basically a record of pupil information that goes with the student wherever they go so if they move from the hospital maybe to Willowbank School and then maybe to home for a while to recuperate or maybe then on to their mainstream school this passport would follow that child in whatever form it is whether it be um, electronic or part electronic part written so that the child will have a record and the teachers can see what they've been doing and what's important to the child as well. It's not just about school work, but it's also about stuff from medical personnel to say, well, you know, the medication might be making them slightly slow to react and respond or might make them drowsy in the afternoon. All of this, which is incredibly useful information to the ongoing education of that child. So let's go back a bit to the collection. So based on the analysis, the school in Leicester, we identified four innovative practices that covered most of the key educational factors and that they were best match for the needs of our school. And what we did with these four practices is that we created what we called information cards and training action instructions based on these factors so that they could be used as a basis for anyone to use them to carry out their own training actions at their own institution. And I'll show you in a bit what these cards looked like. And they would then be served as templates for all the partners to create their own based on their own chosen practices. So again, it's about a partner finding something that worked for them in their school, creating a training action instruction so that teachers could go out and say, we like this type of software. We like Edmodo, for example, and here is what you would need and here is how you would use it so that teachers would train the teachers and then those teachers would go out and try it and see if it worked for them. Um, there were information cards and there are information cards for all of the following ICT-based solutions. So there's quite a collection there and all the partners were involved in drawing up different ones of these. The ones that the Children's Hospital School created were educational filmmaking using something called eTwinning, which is an online web, Panda in my chair, and uh, real-time online education. So that's teaching children face-to-face -face using things like Skype or Big Blue Button or, or anything else that would give them a, a real-time online connection. We also created a compendium of all the information cards and you can download all of these from the toolkit. So this is an example of the um, information card for there's a panda in my seat and it basically just says gives you the context of what the activity is, and what it's based on and who it can be used for, how long it would take, what you would need and what you expect the outcomes to be and then how you would get feedback from those that attended it or for those that were using it. So the training action, which was actually not just the card, it was about training people to go and use the cards in their institutions. And it was for teachers and anybody else involved with the child that was ill. So it could involve the medical staff looking after the child. And what, what it was was an introduction to whichever information cards you felt would be most suitable for which institution the training action was going to be held at. It would then involve group work with these people, so like a brainstorming session. How do you think it might work? What do you think would be useful? What do you think the barriers might be? How would you go about implementing it? Is there a cost implication? All of that type of thing. And then coming up with a plan of action for their own institution. How would they implement this at their own school? And then it would involve the school's trialing type of software or device or um, information card that they'd chosen and having a go at it for a good few weeks or half a term, whatever the school system was in the respective country, and then giving feedback via a SurveyMonkey questionnaire that had been set up specifically to get feedback in all of the partner country languages. So we had SurveyMonkeys in Spanish, in Catalan, in English, in German, 
in Egyptian. Um, I think that's just about all of them because the Belgian people use the English survey monkey. Um, and then th those feedback and results would be analysed. So training actions by the LEHO partners were held in each partner country, although we are still waiting for some results from Spain. Um, the feedback from SurveyMonkey has been received and analysed by the Children's Hospital School. And what I'm going to show you now is just some of the results of the analysis about what type of ICT was trialled and what worked and how it worked. So across Europe, this is just a pie chart showing you which, how many countries responded and the percentage of replies that we got across Europe. So you can see there that we got most replies from Belgium and although this is this is absolutely wonderful, it also skewed the data slightly because all of the Belgian respondents were responding about their just the type of software that the company um, is using. But what was also nice though is that we got quite a lot from um, an event that we held in Vienna which was a training action of members of the HOPE Congress. Now HOPE is um, the Hospital School Education Congress which unites lots of hospital school teachers across Europe. And the Children's Hospital School held a training action in Vienna at the HOPE Congress and we looked at four different types of ICT solution and asked for feedback from this training action. So we got quite a lot of feedback from that which was wonderful. And we've had feedback from Egypt, Italy, um, the UK and Germany as well. The other thing I looked at is what types of educational establishment were sending feedback to us because obviously it would be interesting to see were they all hospital schools or were they mainstream schools. Well interestingly enough mainstream schools were also feeding back to the training actions. So they obviously had children or had encountered a situation where there were children who were not able to attend. Um, we had some special schools as well, which was schools for children with maybe severe learning difficulties. We got feedback from those involved in home education. And then the other category, which was um, mostly looking at um, students who were replying and also people and employees involved in, in BedNet, which isn't a hospital, but it deals with Ill, Ill children. And then which ICTs in general were covered by all of these schools and partners across Europe. So as I mentioned earlier, we got a slightly skewed result because we got a lot of replies from Belgium, from BedNet, and BedNet are a partner in the Laho project, and they very kindly got a lot of people to trial out their own system and, and fed back on it, which was great because we got a lot of solid feedback. But I think if we just ignore the big green bed net stripe, we can see actually that we got the next highest peak is really for others and that includes things like using video and social media and WhatsApp and things like that. So these sorts of things were already being used and trialled across Europe. And then the next group is distance education. And this is things like using Skype, as I mentioned earlier, or Big Blue Button, or anything that allows you to talk directly to children um, face to face, like the old systems in Australia where they used to have the radio communications for students in the outback, I suppose. And then the next ones were um, using online learning materials, self sort of self-education type thing. And then the, the one panda in my seat, which was trialled by um, both people in Italy or, and in the UK, and also was discussed in Vienna as a possible solution for younger children. So we had a really good mix of different types of ICTs across Europe, which was great to see that people were trying different things, not just the most easy or the most obvious. Um, I thought I'd better explain, seeing as we got such a great big peak, what the BedNet system is. So it, it's, a, it's actually a proprietary system um, for distance education that is intended for children in um, Dutch-speaking schools in Flanders or Brussels who have long-term chronic illnesses. So it's a proprietary written software and BedNet is a, a, a free service that um, goes into schools 
and facilitates live and real-time connections with lessons in the classroom. All of the technical equipment that is needed is supplied by Bednet free of charge and it is installed at home and in the classroom through a network of volunteers who, who work with Bednet. Um, it is funded mostly through uh, government funding so the government is supporting this and they are incredibly busy and they have units right across Belgium and they are very highly skilled and highly trained um, professionals who go in and will also deal with the emotional side of children who have things like cancer who may or may not be returning to the school. Um, the next highest graph was there's a panda in my seat so I thought I'd explain briefly what this is too. This is based on an American cancer charity called Monkey in My Chair and it's used for younger children up to the age of about 12 or 13 um, and what it is is that in America they have a monkey that takes the place of the child and the monkey is sent to school and takes and sits in the seat that the ill child would normally sit at so that the children in school are aware that there is a a member of their class missing but they can see that the monkey is there representing this child and the monkey has a backpack and in the backpack are already things like paper and pens and pencils and the backpack gets filled with letters from the other students and work from the teachers and it can be a low-tech solution or it can even make it ICT rich if you want to send USB sticks or small disposable cameras and in the States, there is um, a, gr a little website that the ch children can join and that enables them to um, access chat and they can go online and chat to their friends and they can download information from their teachers and their schools and it's very safe and secure. But in the UK, because it is just for cancer children, in the UK there isn't a similar thing. So we changed it slightly and, and just made it open to all children who can't attend school due to illness and called it a panda in my seat instead and we used a low-tech ICT approach by using what we call snail mail so there was no actual computing involved and that's mainly because of the age of the children that we used this with. What I wanted to do now is show you a very short film about our panda at the um, Children's Hospital School. It only lasts a minute and so I just need to change the screens over so bear with me a moment while I run this film and then we'll come back to the chat session here. So that was just a very, very short film and I uh, 
<laughs> Thank you. Let's, I, I apologise for the quality of the pictures there, but they were taken by members of staff on, on phones and all sorts, and I, I put them together in a short film just to show the effectiveness of this type of very low-tech ICT that works really well for children who are much younger and who, who are able to actually communicate with their friends and get work from their teachers and can share their lives and they can share their illness if they feel like they want to with the students at the um, at the school. Now, that's it. Just apologies for this. Thank you, Faroujia. Um, the um, wanted to to explore some of the um, thoughts that people had about using um, ICT, and this was part of the Survey Monkey feedback that we had, and. Um, wanted to see whether the people were happy with the way that we worked this, doing the training actions and the information cards, and whether they felt it was of use to them as well. So um, the blue is, is good, the red is bad. Um, the question, were there any barriers to implementing this, was only asked really in Vienna at of the HOPE Congress people because they were actively involved in hospital school education and they were right in front of us. And um, we got quite a few that said yes, there were definitely barriers to being able to implement this at their schools. I'll have a look at some of the reasons why in a bit. Um, we asked, did you receive really useful documentation? Was what we prepared of use to you to actually carry out the training actions and use these ICTs in your school? So most people said yes, absolutely, or, or very, but we had some no's as well, and that's always useful to get because it means, well, it, this is self-explanatory to us because we produced it, but might not be to everybody else. What was really nice, though, was were you happy with the outcome of what you did? And we absolutely received no no's. Everybody was between definitely and, yeah, I'm reasonably happy with what we did. Um, would you recommend doing this to other colleagues? As in, would you recommend colleagues to come and visit this site and look at the training actions? And again, we got quite a large proportion of saying, yes, absolutely, we would, or was certainly very likely that we would. Was it useful taking part? There we had slightly fewer replies. So more people said, yeah, possibly, rather than absolutely. And also fewer replied to that question, which was interesting. So maybe there was something about the question that wasn't quite clear. Um, but then when we asked, would you take part in similar types of things, we had, again, a large reply, absolutely would take part in similar things. Um, so that was really used to, useful to us. We also asked people to give us their ideas about what they thought about the um, training actions and everything else. And one of the um, teachers in Belgium said that they were incredibly happy to be working with BedNet because it enabled the child with cancer to be able to be in touch with their classmates. And the teacher felt she could do something useful as well um, and was able to help the child who couldn't attend the school. Um, Another one said it was it was very well organized. Um, this would be about the training actions in Vienna and provided a range of materials and approaches that led to very useful and fruitful discussions. So maybe they hadn't thought of using any of these types of ICT to reach the children who were off school ill and, and actually had been inspired by some of the things that we covered in Vienna. We looked at Panda. We looked at educational filmmaking. And there was a third one, um, I can't remember it, maybe Nicola can type that up in the text because it's gone. Um, and then also we had some of the barriers and quite a few of the schools said, well, it would be really difficult, they're great ideas, but it would be really difficult to implement this because of um, the guidelines that we've already got and the way that we have to um, carry out these guidelines to meet the, the, thank you, real-time education, that's it. Um, it would be difficult to implement because we have to meet certain targets and have certain guidelines that we have to teach to, and we can't just bring in new things like this. It's very, very difficult to do that. 
And that's a really important barrier because that exists in more or less all of the EU countries to a greater or lesser degree. Um, we, we have it in the UK too. Maybe we have a bit more freedom than some other countries. But it certainly is an interesting thing to be aware of that whatever you're working in and whatever you think is a great idea, you just ha do not have the support and backing maybe to be able to introduce it. And then we also had one from Egypt who, who was not impressed at all <laughs> by the sound of things. But the, I think it's a very different scenario because the partner that we have in Egypt is a children's cancer hospital. And this hospital is just involved in students who are for cancer. And the ch children are all present at the one location. And they all go to the school there as well. And they're all taught. And they felt that maybe direct communication was much more important than using ICT. And um, that ICT really would only come into its own. Um, that ICT would really only come into its own once um, the child was maybe no longer in front of the teacher but wanted to ask a question if they had a, a problem. And so um, they, they were not fully behind the whole use of ICT, but what they did suggest was direct communication and also storytelling and plays as a way of doing that, and then providing all of these as an electronic resource for the children to access at a later date. So um, I just wanted to give you the, the link to the LEHO website here. Um, this is where you'll actually find the outputs from all um, of the work that's gone on during the LEHO project. And this not only includes the, the toolkit, um, but also the practical guide for teachers and the EU model. So the toolkit is just about complete, but can be added to by anybody that has uh, something useful that they feel would be of benefit to um, children in, uh, who were not able to attend mainstream school. The practical guide is a, is a document that is uh, going to be an amazing resource and translated into other languages, which will be of use to teachers who are involved in the education of teachers uh, for children who are not well. You can also um, join your own national communities on the LEHO website. So if you have any specific problems in your own country, you can actually um, join your national community and see if there is anything there in your own language that might be able to help you. So here are a couple of, of useful websites. The, obviously, the LEHO project one. I put the Children's Hospital School Leicester up there if you wanted to know a bit more about what happens at our school. We have a, a very informative website and even have a, a virtual tour of the school. And also, I wanted to point out that everything that's produced during and by the LEHO project is produced under a Creative Commons license. And this means that you can take it, you can use it, you can copy it, you can share it. It's all, um, none of it is covered by any type of copyright. And that includes the images. They might be covered by conditions that you need to credit to people, but you can actually do all of that. And so everything is done under that type of license. So you, you might want to check out what the Creative Commons means. So here's a, a link to that website as well. Um, we have a Facebook page where you can actually join and see what's happening in an ongoing discussions about LAHO. And we also have a YouTube channel. And we are hoping that people will upload any videos for some of the things they are trialing, perhaps, uh, onto the YouTube channel here. And if you're not sure about the YouTube channel, you can always contact me um, via the LAHO website and I will be able to upload things for you or show you how to do it yourself. We've already uploaded uh, um, some films that our pupils have made as part of the educational filmmaking where they talk about their illnesses. Some of them have talked about eSafety, which is a film they made intended for other students, and also some other films um, that they've made about what it's like to be ill and not being able to attend a mainstream school. So. Though the YouTube channel hopefully will grow as time proceeds. Um, 
again, this webinar is going to be available for you to be able to download, because if you missed the start, you can download it and listen to it at any time, and you can share it freely. Um, and now we get to the um, questions section. So there is a chat facility, as you can see there in the middle of the page. So if you wanted to chat um, or type in any questions that you might have, I'll reply to them verbally, um, or Nicola will be able to type an answer for you. And um, yeah, please come and have a look at the website, but also feel free now to put any questions that you might have into the chat page. I'm not able to hear you, but I can certainly read your, your comments. And uh, welcome to the people who joined us late, and I'm sorry you missed.